Hi, I'm Josh Ozersky for The Manual, and I'm here at the Portland Knife House with Eitan Zayas. And Eitan, you are the knife master. You sharpen knives, you sell knives. Yeah, I used to, I used to cook for a living. That's how I got into this. Well, this is a bitching knife mm -hmm. that you're using, I see here. What, what mm -hmm. is this? Well, this is a, this is a Tiryasu Fujiwara Blue Steel Core. Uh, this is my latest uh, purchase for myself. Uh, this is so your own, you don't even use sell it. This is my own. Uh, I do sell these. Uh, I ran out, but I still took one home. Almost everybody holds a knife incorrectly. And they hold it like a hammer. They hold it back here. Right. And you have almost no control when you do this. Okay. If you want to have more control, you need to do what's called a pinch grip. Uh, so I put my hand here, but even if and you that's have the one middle, without... That's the middle finger you uh, put in Yeah, there. that's where mine you know, sits. But as long as you're above the bolster, then, What's the then bolster? that's all you need. So the bolster is this part, and you should be holding above it. When I'm usually showing people, like you should be able to do everything with two fingers. Okay, it's just two fingers. You don't have to hold it like that. That's assuming that it's nice and sharp. If it's a nice, if it's a nice sharp knife, yeah. Once you know how to hold it, then you need to learn how to protect yourself. Okay. And when I see people cut like this, it drives me nuts. Uh, it's the best way to chop off a finger is do that. What you want to do is you want to curl your fingers back. Okay. And then your knuckles will basically sit on the blade. Right. And then you're not going to cut yourself because you're always against... Well, what about at the end in, when in there's nowhere to put your... Like once you get to the end of the tomato, there's nowhere to put your mm -hmm. fingers. Then you have to... No, then you have to adjust, you know, at the very end. You can still do that. There's really three ways that you're going to use a knife. One is slicing, one is running through the board, and the other one is mincing. And I guess also chopping. So one of the three ways. Four, let's call it four ways. <laughs> let's call it four ways. Why not? So um, almost everything you're going to do with a knife, you can do on an onion. So um, if I want to just dice this, then first I'm going to chop. Then I'm going to slice the ends so they're not connected hard. anymore. Um, not really. Not if your knife is sharp, and if again, if you keep it connected, you. And then I'm going to run it through the board. And then if I did this and it's still too large for me, then I'm going to chop it. You're using one knife for all these things. I'm going to go ahead and say that, take a guess that if you were cutting up a steak or a piece of chicken or something, that you'd also be using this knife? Like this is your one go-to instrument for all these things? I use the same knife for everything. I have a lot of knives at home. They're all the same knife, different makers. Uh, but and that's a, that's what, like a chef, like personal. an eight inch chef knife? Yeah, just an eight inch. Yeah, I use between an eight to like a nine and a half inch chef knife. And that's just what I do. And I feel if you know how to use a knife, then you can use it for everything. So you definitely mm -hmm. would say that it's better to get one, mm -hmm. like spend the money and get one really, really good knife mm -hmm. than to get the block with a bunch of crappy knives. Absolutely. I'm definitely yeah. gonna try to yeah. follow your advice. Yeah. I'm sure I won't do yeah. it as well as you, but I'll do it better. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. I'm yeah. Josh Ozersky, yeah. and this is The Manual.